Thank you so much. A great uh, reminder of the greatness of our God and how much we love and appreciate Him that He, His Son not sparing, sent Him to die. And we can say with the hymn, we scarce can take it in. Let's uh, pray this morning. <clears throat> Lord, we so easily adopt the Ahasuerus attitude by thinking that we are king and we fail to humble ourselves and embrace repentance, Lord. This morning we pray, please help us through this passage to learn from his heirs and our heirs and allow you to break us down, to make us to be more like Jesus, our Savior and our God. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now if you turn please in your Bible to the book of Esther. We're going to continue this morning. It's a wonderful book of Esther. And please follow along here, starting in verse 1, chapter 1, verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, this is Ahasuerus that reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, over 107 and 20 provinces, that in those days when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and the princes of the provinces, being before him. When he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty, many days, even a hundred and fourscore days, that'd be 180 days. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan the palace, both unto great and small, seven days in the court of the king, garden of the king's palace, where were white, green, purple hangings fastened with cords of fine linen and purple to silver rings and pillars of marble. The beds were of gold and silver upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black and marble. And they gave them drink in vessels of gold, the vessels being diverse one from another, and royal wine in abundance and according to the state of the king. And the drinking was according to the law. None did compel, for so the king had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. Also, Vashti, the queen, made a feast for the women in the royal house, which belonged to King Ahasuerus. On the seventh day, when the, king's heart, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded, Mehuman, Bistha, Harbono, Harbona, Bigtha, Abatha, Zethar, Carcass, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of, the king, of Ahasuerus the king, to bring Vashti, the queen, before the king with the crown royal, to show the people and the princess her beauty, for she was fair to look on. But the queen, Vashti, refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. Then the king said to the wise men which knew the times, so was the king's manner toward all that knew the law and the judgment, and next unto him was Karshena and Shethar, Admatha, Tarsheth, Maris, Marsena, Mamuk, Memukan, the seven princes of Persia and Media, which saw the king's face and which sat at first of the kingdom. What shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to law because she hath not performed the commandment of the king Ahasuerus by the chamberlains? And Memukan answered before the king and the princes, Vashti the queen hath not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and to all the people that were in all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes when it shall be reported. The king Ahasuerus commanded Svashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes which have heard of the deed of the queen, thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath, and if it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, that it be not altered, that Vashti come no more before King Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. When the king's decree which he, he shall make shall be published throughout all his empire, for it is great, all the wives shall give to their husbands honor, both to great and small. And the saying pleased the king and the princess, and the king did according to the word of Memucan. And he sent letters into all the king's provinces, unto every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. Uh, chapter 2, verse 1. 
After these things, when the wrath of King Ahasuerus was appeased, he remembered Vashti and what, was, and what she had done and what was decreed against her. Now, here we have this passage as we saw uh, last time. From what we just read, there's just one word that we can use to describe Ahasuerus, and that is the word wrong. Ahasuerus was flat out right wrong to have decided to make this 180-day celebration of himself, of how great he was. Ahasuerus was wrong to keep exalting himself and telling everybody how great he was, get drunk with the wine of his own self-importance. And he pushed God out of the thinking, out of his thinking. It was wrong for Ahasuerus to show the power that he had over women, even his own wife, to have her be defiled in front of all these drunken guests. He was wrong. Ahasuerus was wrong. And Vashti was right. Vashti was right to refuse to let the king defile her. When Vashti said no to the king, the king was infuriated. Has anyone ever done that to you? Has anyone ever just defied you and made you really mad? So mad you can't believe it. You can feel the blood begin to rush to your head. You can feel your jugular veins start to bulge out. So mad. Have you ever been that way that if you looked in a mirror, you'd see this person here. Flashpoint. I can't believe it. Where, why, why do you and I get mad? Why does the Hashuaris get mad like that? Why, why, why does that happen? Because he and us feel we have a right to fill in the blank. That'll give you the reason why you're mad. Fill in the blank. Because you and I have a right. We have a right. We have a right to our spouse to, to respect us. And I was disrespected. That's the reason for the conflict in this marriage between Ahasuerus and Vashti. The house, house is not the way I want it. I have a right to that. The dinner is not when I want it. I have a right to that. My spouse is occupied with this or that and doesn't listen. I have a right. My, I have a half-brother named Bob. Bob Cohen is my half-brother. It's my half-brother, different father, same mother. You'd never know we were brothers if you ever met him. <clears throat> totally opposite. But uh, I, I was very happy to have a brother that was named Cohen. I didn't... Uh, until he told me that his father was Polish and his real name was Kowalski. I thought, <laughs> Kowalski, Bob. All these years, I thought I had a Cohen for a body. I got a Kowalski. Anyway, but my brother Bob, uh, I love my brother Bob, and he taught me a lot. To, to, to say that my sister-in-law was a little hard on Bob is a great understatement if you knew her. I can just remember for, uh, she would be in our house. Bob! Come here, and I don't care what you're doing. That was her uh, <laughs> stupid, you know, come here. And I was, we, everybody was always, we, they used to call him Saint Bob, you know, <laughs> because Bob would just, he, he, did, he never got mad. He never got mad at Marcia, and she was pretty hard on him. Why? Because he loved her. He loved Marcia to, to the day that she, she died. He loved her, and um, he's never gotten married again. I, I, I kind of wondered why, but anyway, uh, he never did. So how do you keep from getting mad? How does Bob keep from getting mad? How does a Christian keep from getting mad? You know how we keep from getting mad? We keep from getting mad by looking at the cross, by going back to the cross. Why? You think of what happened at the cross. At the cross, we saw what he didn't deserve, and what we deserved. Those nails were our nails. That cross was our cross. That shame and was all that we deserved. That's what happened. He had a right not to be there. We, had, we, we, we deserved to be there, and all that was done to him. And so what we see him doing at the cross, or not doing at the cross, not reviling back, not fighting back, not lifting up his voice. All the false accusations that Herod said against him, it says he answered him to never a word. He didn't take one thing. And this, this man, Ahasuerus, is exactly the opposite of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross because he is a, Ahasuerus is a picture of pride. P-R-I-D-E. Pride. 
I have a right for Vashti to come when I call and to do what I say she should do. But instead of putting a halt to the anger and, uh, and Ahashua is coming to us, he went forward with his rage. And it says he was very wroth and his anger burned in him. And then it says there in verse 14 that these, his trusted counselors, it says they saw his face. Now remember that face I was telling you about? The juggler veins expanding, the redness, the rage. And they saw that face. And he made a very hasty decision. When you and I make a wrong decision, the worst thing we can do is go ahead with it. That's the worst thing we can do. Wrong, we make wrong decisions. He made a wrong decision. We make wrong decisions. And wrong decisions need to be repented of. They need to be changed. You know, because why do we have this history here for us in the book of Esther? Because Romans 15, 4 says that these things were written aforetime, were written for our learning. This is our classroom. We are the students. This was written for our learning. In 1 Corinthians 10, 11, it says, all these things happen unto them for examples. And they are written for our admonition. This is a, so what else has been written in the Bible for, to learn about a wrong decision that should have been repented of? Well, there was a man named Jephthah. You remember him? Jephthah in Judges 11, and he had a daughter, and he vowed a vow. He said, boy, God, if you deliver the Ammonites into my hands, then uh, the first thing that enters into my doors when I return in peace, I'll offer as a sacrifice. That's what he said. And what happened? His daughter, his only child, no son, no other daughters, his only child came in with a timbrel, and she was singing and she was dancing. And he said, I made a vow. I made a decision, I have to kill you. I have to sacrifice you. And unfortunately he did. That was a decision that needed to be repented of. He needed to say I was wrong and ask God for forgiveness. You remember another one? Saul and Jonathan. Similar type thing. Jonathan, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Saul had said, we're going to go fight the Philistines and cursed is the man that eats any food this day. That's found in 1 Samuel 14, 28. He cursed is the man that eats any food this day. Well, Jonathan didn't hear it. His son, he didn't hear him say that. So Jonathan went out and he found some honey and he ate the honey and it says his eyes were open. He got strength. He went forward and anyway, it goes on and it says that uh, Saul didn't know, but it came to light that Jonathan had done this, and he said to Jonathan, he said, you shall surely die. Because he made a wrong decision. And then you remember what happened. The people said, I don't care what decision he made. Shall the person who delivered us out of the Philistines today die? We will not allow that to go forward. And it didn't. It didn't go forward. That was a wrong decision on the part of Saul that needed to be repented of. And how about in Matthew 14? You remember Herod's birthday? When he made a wrong decision, he said, he said, uh, he said uh, to um, uh, Herodias, uh, she said, uh, or what was her name? It doesn't matter. Anyway, the, the daughter, Salamis. Salamis, yeah, right. The daughter, he says, he, says, he says, whatever you ask, I'll give. Whatever you ask, I'll give. That was a wrong decision because when she said, I want the head of John the Baptist, in a container, that man should have repented of his decision. Instead, with stubbornness and bullheadedness, it says the king was sorry, nevertheless for the oath's sake. And them which sat with him at meat, because he wouldn't be embarrassed in front of the other people, he commanded to be given her. That was a wrong decision. These were all oaths, all decisions that were wrong, and when the time came, they needed to be repented of. They needed to be said, I was wrong. I was wrong. And we've, this was a horrible outcome in the case of Ahasuerus here. We've seen Ahasuerus had one problem. He had one problem which kept him, which kept Saul, which kept Jephthah, which kept Herod from changing. And that's one problem is one word, P-R-I-D-E, pride. And that's the disease of the devil. That's the disease of, of, of Satan, because he said in Isaiah 14, he said, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne 
above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation. He remember, I will, I will, I will. Me, I will. That's pride. And if you were to go to hell today, and you were to interview every person who is hell today, they'd all have the same disease. They'd all be there. They're all there because of that one word, pride. That's headstrongness. Now, how do you look at Ahasuerus, the, 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 the ruler of Persia? You see him just as some heathen man who deserves hell? That's not how God sees him. Oh, he's not one of the chosen people. Israel's a Jewish, so, you know. No, no, no. God cares. God loves that man, Ahasuerus. How do you look at, um, Ed has read, made reference today to Iran and Ahmadinejad. How do you look at him today? Do you look at him, the present day ruler of the same place of Persia? Well, he's the enemy of the Jewish people, destroy him. No, no, no. God loves Ahmadinejad. And he, why? Because God made Ahmadinejad. And I wish we had given him an easier name to pronounce, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> And God's not willing that Ahmadinejad to perish. I don't know, what do you think about, what, when I say Harold Camping and family radio, what comes to your mind like, oh, no, oh, another date? You know, is that what we're going to go through here? You know, I don't know how you think of that. God loves Harold Camping, who set the date of May 21st, 2010, that everybody should get ready because the, the Lord's going to return on that date as he had done several times from before. Well, he, they promoted this date. As what? Inside information. I got inside information. What's that? Pride. I got inside information. No one else has got this. It's May 21st. God loves and God chastens whom he loves. God loves Harold Camping. God chastened Harold Camping. Why? How did he chasten Harold Camping? It came, it went. He didn't come. <laughs> he got chastened, right? Now, when that happened to Harold Camping, Harold Camping had a choice. He could have become hardened and do like he did in the past and say, well, just a little bit off. I got the new date now. This one's a real for sure one. He's doing that. He could have continued in that pride of I've got the inside information. But Harold Camping had another option. And that was to see the embarrassment as God's chastening hand on him and submit in humility by saying, I was wrong. Please forgive me. So yesterday we received a letter, a form letter in the mail from Harold Camping, which said these words. Now realize that those people who were calling our attention to the Bible statement that of that day and hour knoweth no man were right in their understanding of those verses, and we were wrong. We humbly recognize that God may not tell his people the date when Christ will return any more than he tells anyone the date of his death physically, we tremble before God. We humbly ask him for forgiveness for making that sinful statement. Good decision. He repented. Good decision. God loved Ahasuerus. By the way, you should all write letters to Family Radio and encourage him for making that position. Thank him for making that position. Anyway, God loves Ahasuerus. God loves and God chastened him. It's so wonderful to see this, that it, it, something wonderful happened to Ahasuerus in this. God caused his wife to refuse to come. That's what happened, he refused to come. And God caused Ahasuerus, really, in this moment here, to be humbled before, before, um, <clears throat> sorry, I put this clock up here, but no, there it is. Okay, I can't see the back. You won't be happy when I can't see that, but now I can see this. You're happy now. Anyway, uh, God caused a, God, God caused it. So that was chastening when Vashti refused to come, when the date May 21st didn't, it came and went. That was chastening. And, 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 and th that was a chastening in Ahasuerus' life. What is it in your life that's wrong? That's a proud course of stubbornness. God saw that Ahasuerus was going down the wrong road, and so God intervened on his life and brought a stop sign to Ahasuerus, where he had the chance to either go forward on his path of pride or to make the U-turn, the U-turn. Unfortunately, Ahasuerus didn't make the U-turn. He let his anger burn, and that was not good. Because in verse 12, uh, 1, which we read of chapter 2, verse 1, it says that when he was finished being angry, he remembered Vashti. You know what hell is? 
Hell is a place of great regrets. It's a place where everyone, everyone in hell today regrets the decisions that they made. It's a place of a great review of decisions. You know, it's just a little picture when you look in, in, in Esther 2, uh, verse 1, it's after this, he remembered Vashti. Those are some of the most tragic words in the Bible. He remembered. Hell can be described as a place where after these things, he remembered. After all the decisions have been made in life, hell is a review place. What had Ahasuerus done? Ahasuerus divorced Vashti. He was a drunken fool. And he intoxicated himself for, for, for half a year with his own pride and his disgusting arrogance. And he caused Vashti to refuse his de de degrading demand. At that moment, when that happened, Ahasuerus was faced with a decision, a very important decision. Will I see God behind Vashti? In what she's doing, will I see the loving, chastening hand of God causing Vashti to refuse my demand? Will I see that with my drunken intoxication of my self-pride and my arrogance that I'm on a fatal road to hell? And God has wonderfully put this stop sign in my road. Her name is Vashti. Will I see that? Will I see beyond Vashti to God? Or will I hold to my pride and refuse to throw down the weapons of my rebellion against God? And will I say, what I say is right, and that defines right. What I say is right, and if she refuses to obey me, I will win. Well, it's so sad that unfortunately, he did win. And Ahasuerus made this wrong decision, and he lived to regret it. You know, when you look at chapter 1 and verse 12, Look at verse, chapter 1, verse 12. You see that colon there in the middle of the verse? That colon? That colon is very, very important because it's a little thing, but it's a definite place and a time. Why is it so important? Because that's the decision point for Ahasuerus, that colon. That's the place of the second or the microsecond when Ahasuerus has heard that she won't come. And God has put a stop sign. You know, God put that sign up there. You see, it's a U-turn OK. You see it on the road? U-turn OK. That was the colon there. You like to underline your Bible? Underline the colon. <laughs> because that's a very important point. All right? Those of you underline your Bible, did you underline your Colon. All right. That's it. That's the point. The colon was for Ashuerus, his U-turn OK sign. He had that chance. It could have been a different therefore. It could have been, it could, that was Ahasuerus' opportunity to have these, all these verses come out differently, written for our learning. Let's rewrite these verses. Want to do, this is going to be fun. The, I want you to look at your Bible, and, and let's rewrite the verses how it would have been so much better if it came out this way. All right, here we go, right? Because we're going to follow the three universal rules. Remember the first rule, rule is what? Don't make God mad, right. <laughs> That's right, Kim. Don't make God mad. Second rule, make God happy. Third rule, take God seriously. So we're going to rewrite this history that if, that, that, that how we want it, and we're going to rewrite it so that Ahasuerus would not make God mad, and instead Ahasuerus would make God happy, and God would have done all, I mean, Ahasuerus would have done all of this because Ahasuerus was going to take God seriously, all right? So here we go. We're going to rewrite it. You follow along in your Bible. You compare, you compare the rewrite to what it says. Okay, here we go. You ready? Esther 1.12. Okay. But the Queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Your underlined colon. You see it? Okay. Therefore was the king very remorseful, and his brokenness melted him. There's 13. Then the king said to his wise man, which knew the times, for so was the king's manner toward all that knew the law and judgment. And verse 14. And next unto him was Karshna, Shethar, Admatha, and Tarshish, Meris, Mersana, Mermica, and those seven princes of Persia. Okay. Which saw the king's broken face, and which sat first at the kingdom. What shall I do to tell my kingdom that I was so wrong 
because my actions were rebellious against God. And what shall be done unto the Queen Vashti because she was so right, because she was obeying God, and she kept me from sinning more against God because she hath not performed the commandment of the king of Hashuaris by the chamberlains. And Memachon answered before the king and the princes, Vashti the queen hath done right not to the king only, but also to all the princes and all the people that are in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all the women and men, so that they shall, they shall all fear God and not want to make God mad <laughs> and to make God happy and to take God seriously. I think he would have done it that way. Anyway, when it shall be reported, the king Ahasuerus was... They'll say the king Ahasuerus was proud, arrogant, boastful in his drunken stupor and pride, and he commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, undressed. But she obeyed not and came not. Likewise shall the ladies and men of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of the deed of the queen, that everyone should obey God rather than men, even at the risk of their own lives. Thus shall there arise righteousness in our nation shall be exalted, verse 19. If it please the king, let there go a royal commander from him and let it be written among the laws of the Medes, Persians and Medes that it not be altered, that King Ahasuerus knows that he was wrong to have been self-exalting, proud, arrogant, and through immorality has been rebellion it's against God. Therefore, King Ahasuerus makes a holiday for God-fearing women called Queen Vashti Day. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? And when the king's decree, which he shall make, shall be published throughout the, all the kingdom, for it's great, all the people in the kingdom will give to God honor and worship and praise, both small, great and small people. And the saying pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Memachon, for he sent letters, in verse 22, sent letters into all the king's provinces and to every province, according to the writing thereof, and to every people, after their language, that every person should honor God and obey God rather than man, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. And now, chapter 2, verse 1. And after those things, when the, king, when the wrath of King Ahasuerus was remembered and he did the right thing, he honored Vashti as a woman of God. And for what she had done, and he became a man of God. Wouldn't that be great if that was written that way? Wouldn't that be tremendous? Don't you wish that? That, that it was all changed after your underlined colon in verse 12? Wouldn't it be good? It'd be great. But it wasn't, unfortunately. Because the colon, from the colon of verse 12, it took a different turn. But it didn't have to. It could have been written the way just made it up. But what are the colon points in your life? The colon points in your life. What are the roads in your life that you're blind to, but that's through your own pride, you're making God mad. You're not making God happy. You're not in your, among your friends, in your marriage, your coworkers, you're not taking God seriously. What seriously? Proverbs 6, 16. These six, things, these six things that the Lord hate. Seven are abomination. Number one, a proud look. Proverbs 15, 1, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Colossians 3, 18 through 21, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, that's fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. This is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Do you have a Vashti in your life? He did. Do you see, is there some person that's God's stop sign to you? Has someone defied you? Has someone made you mad? Someone made your blood boil? Could that be God's colon of verse 12 point in your life? Could that be God saying, take the road not taken by Ahasuerus? Your personal Esther chapter 1 is still being written. His is written but yours is still being written. And you can, you can throw down the weapons of your rebellion like Ahasuerus should have. You can confess your pride, arrogance, your conceited demanding of your rights like Ahasuerus did not. 
You can ask God for forgiveness in others and say that you have not done it God's way. But from this point, you're determined to not make God mad. You're going to determine to make Him happy. You're going to take Him seriously. This is so crystal clear to me. You know why? Because I lived with my father who divorced my mother when I was one. And then I grew up and watched woman after woman become his wife, the love of his life, and then become his ex, the hatred of his life. Five marriages, five common law marriages, ten women. And I had a front row seat to it as a kid. And I heard the phone calls my dad would make to his friends. Oh, I met the most wonderful woman, unimaginable. And then as a kid, ducking when irons were being thrown at each other. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's not pleasant. The rages, the smashing of all the things. And the phone calls, you would, this woman was so horrible, I just never knew her. Always the same. And from those experiences as a kid, put a pretty strong hatred of divorce in me. Even though I wasn't saved, I wasn't Christian, didn't know anything about God. And there have been moments of stress in our marriage of 42 years, between Cheryl and I. When provoked, I could hear God say to me, what's it going to be, Tom? Harsh words that will either be the gasoline or the match. That's the way it can go. Or is it going to be, don't make God mad. Make him happy. Take him seriously. As a kid growing up, I watched many arrivals of the colons of verse 12s in my father's life. And I've also arrived at the colons of verse 12 in my own life. And it comes down to the same choice. Do it my way, that's the theme song in hell. Or do it God's way, that's the theme song in heaven. It's just that simple. You know, Cheryl and I have been married for less than a month in Cincinnati. It was a little rough. I, I didn't marry somebody Jewish, so it, changed, it altered my financial status slightly. <laughs> <clears throat> But I got a job, a training job, as a switchman on the Ohio Railroad, $1.75 an hour. Our rent was $75 a month. We had a one-room studio in River Road where gunshots were commonly heard at night, when, in between the wife beatings from the units next to us. And I remember we had a, a one major argument, and uh, all I'd ever seen in my life with the argument was, walk out, divorce. And Cheryl did something that changed me. We, like I said, we lived in this one room uh, apartment with one door going in, and she went to the door like this. She didn't say a word, opened the door and did this. <laughs> and just looked at me. And from what she did, and that time, I took a razor blade and cut out of my personal dictionary the word divorce. I cut it out, the word divorce. That was 42 years ago. And so I have become very sensitive to arriving at the colon points of verse 12 and to hear God say, I know this is hard for you, but do you want to leave me and go your own way? Or do you want me to go with you through this? Because getting even and setting the record straight is like a two-pound chocolate bar. It looks so good. And I sure do want to eat that. And it feels so good when I'm eating it. But afterward, I could vomit. I'm so sick. I'm talking to you from experience. <clears throat> okay, so what happens? So what happens if you take the road that Ahasuerus took? Okay, you took down our road. What happens in verse... What happens is Esther 2, verse 1. After these things, when the wrath of Ahasuerus was appeased, he remembered Vashti. That's so tragic. He remembered Vashti. Oh, the sadness of all that. He remembered his wife, Vashti. She was no longer his wife. They were divorced. He remembered the Vashti he used to have. He remembered good. He remembered how he loved Vashti. He remembered how Vashti loved him. He remembered how he loved to look at her because the sight of him made, her so, made him so happy. He remembered how supportive she was. I mean, look what an encourager Vashti was. I mean, here he is having his party and so forth. So what does she do? She starts a party for the women in the castle. Very supportive, very nice. 
He remembered with Vashti, I don't have any need of spoil. My heart does safely trust in her. And he remembered all the wonderful days that he had with her. They were together. And he missed her terribly. He missed her terribly. Everything happened so fast, so quickly. Ahasuerus was, 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 was really not even sure how it all happened. And then all of a sudden he wakes up and he finds himself divorced. And he finds himself lonely and sad and at a great loss. This happened so really fast. And it was just all about pride and arrogance and drunkenness and defiance and words that I wished I hadn't said and I wish I could take them back and actions and anger and a drove. And all of a sudden here I am with just memories of how I wish I could turn the clock back. I wish it never happened. That's what people in hell say. I wish I could turn the clock back to the decisions. I wish it never happened. I lost Vashti. And what do I got instead? I got even. And somehow, that's no substitute for the wife I had. Oh, oh God, how did all this happen? I, I, wish, I wish I didn't have these memories. I, I wish I could turn the, just turn the clock back. You know, in, we covered this earlier, but Luke 16, 23, it says, there was a certain frightful conversation between a rich man and Abraham. You remember, the rich man lifted up his eyes in hell and, and he said certain things, but one of the things that was said to him by Abraham, he said in verse 25, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime, etc. Memory is crystal clear in hell. Memory, memory that word memory. Because you know what hell is? Hell is a place of what goes around all comes around in hell. Hell is a place where all the chickens do come to roost. But you know what the cross is? The cross, humility, brokenness, forgiveness, the cross is all that we sent around came around on Christ, on the cross. The cross is where all the chickens came to roost on him. And he died for our sins. He died for us so that we could have a new beginning of, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I'm going to make a U-turn. I'm going to make a U-turn. And we throw down the weapons of our, our warfare. But for Ahasuerus, it was too late. It was too late. But thank God it's not too late for us because our chapters aren't finished being written yet. And we've got the choice to take the colon of verse 12 and to say, I see God's stop sign. I see God's U-turn okay sign. And I'm going to take it because I'm not going to be like a Ahasuerus. Let's pray. Father, help us so much today. Help each one of us, Lord, to realize that you put Vashtis in our lives. We think they're just giving us a hard time. But from heaven... They're sent with love. Lord, help us to march our pride to the firing place and help each one of us, Lord, to take our rifle as part of the firing squad and with purpose and determination pull the trigger on our pride and our arrogance in our I wills, instead of thy will be done. Help us, Lord, so that we can learn from Ahasuerus, who right now knows so very well there should have been a different outcome from the colon of verse 7. Help us to learn. Help us to not make you mad, make you happy, and take you seriously. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.